Hello, my name is Christian Raul and I'm the Chief Evangelist of Sedalo AG. Today I would like to give you an introduction to Streamsheets. So what are Streamsheets all about? Streamsheets run as microservices and use spreadsheet formulas to continuously consume, process and produce event streams. So in this case, we could maybe have an event stream from MQTT or Kafka and the messages keep pouring in and the stream sheet is actually subscribing to a certain topic in the stream. It's then able to connect the payload data of the messages with stream sheet cells, do all kinds of logic calculations and then also publish back the data in the stream. In this sample, we have an IoT controller and this controller is publishing data. It's also able to measure the uh, power consumption and it's able to switch on and off the light. The APDT broker uh, transports the data and uh, a stream sheet would be the subscriber. So let's create the stream sheet. The first thing we have to do in order to create a stream sheet is we have to make sure we have a connection. In this case we have an MQTT broker. So we're using an MQTT provider to set up the broker. So we need a URL, a username, password and in this case, you're also adding a base topic to the connector. Based on this connector, the next step is to create a consumer. And the consumer is using the information from the connector and it will then uh, add specific information about the MQTT topic where the consumer is supposed to subscribe to. And these two steps are necessary in order to create a connection to a stream sheet. Now we can uh, add a new stream sheet. We select the consumer that we previously created. And um, once we've done that, we have our stream sheet ready to go. Well, first thing, we just add a title. So here you can see that basically the handling of a stream sheet is exactly like you know from any other spreadsheet on the market. Um, so you can simply use drag and drop operations here to uh, format. And um, more interesting, of course, is how do we see the data? And that's why we have the inbox on the left side and you can now see that we're receiving data and in the payload is the colored part you can see this the JSON data that's actually coming into the stream sheet and the nice thing about JSON is its key values so it's very easy to connect that to a stream sheet cell as we do here just drag and drop and we have the on and off field and the power consumption now connected to stream sheet cells and if the stream sheet runs you can see that it is uh, receiving the data, the on-off status, and also the power consumption. Um, so that's a regular flow. Of course, there could be like every 10 milliseconds or so. We make it slower here for the video. Uh, and now, once we have the uh, data connected, let's apply some formulas to it. So, for example, we have an edge detect uh, function. Since stream sheet is running in cycles, we want to detect the one cycle where a condition, in this case the on-off signal, is switching from false to true. That's what the edge detect function is doing. We also want to uh, aggregate the amount of power consumed. We call that energy then. And in this case, if we have the lights just being switched on, we reset the value and otherwise we simply add up the existing value in the cell plus the new uh, value. And that works because the steam sheet always calculates from the left uh, to the right and from up to down. We're now adding uh, a max value for the energy and we use a charting feature to um, visualize the, the information. So the red one is the maximum and of course the current consumption is zero yet, but that's going to change. Now we can see we're switching on the light, we're getting the values and you see that the energy value is going up and of course also the blue column is uh, raising up. Um, so that's happened as long as the light is on. If we switch it off, of course, no more power consumption. Um, so that's basically uh, the idea of this part. And now let's build in some intelligence. So we have an alert function. So we want to find out if we consume more energy than our maximum uh, energy. Uh, that's the first thing. And we also bring in the temperature. So we have a maximum te temperature and we have the current temperature. And then of course, again, we use a comparison to find out whether the uh, current temperature is higher than the maximum temperature. Of course, maybe later on we want to switch off the light then. And we also calculated the average. There's a time aggregation function that we can use to look at only the values of the last 300 milliseconds um, to get an average here. That's what's happening. 
And again, since they have this data, we can also create another chart here, which we do, and that would then be on a time axis. So you can see now, if you're getting data again, um, you can see that it is moving along the time axis. And you can also see, of course, that again, we're getting values. And um, that's the uh, second part of this demo. And in the next part of the demo, uh, we see that we have the chance to build in some advanced uh, notification uh, features. So for example, if um, energy or temperature is too high, um, then something is supposed to, to happen. And in this case, the first thing we do is we create this data range because later on, if we store the data in a database, uh, we can use this data field as the content for each um, record or each document that we store. Um, in the alert, we want to make sure that we know what kind of alert happens. So we're looking at cell B9, cell B13 to determine the correct uh, alert message. And uh, if none of those is true, then obviously we don't have an alert. Um, so now let's go on. First step would be to switch off the, uh, the light. Um, we do this only in that one cycle where either of those two alert conditions will go to true. Again, we're using edge detect. And now we can use a, a wizard to create a formula that's connecting back to the IoT device. Um, so we're sending a message with the payload off to a certain topic. And um, of course, uh, that topic is defined by the device. And now we can see the formula here that's being created. And um, then we have as a next step uh, using the same condition, um, we would like to make sure that if uh, the condition happens, we want to send an email. So the email, we use our mail connector that I previously um, built, and I'm using the alert text as the message body and the subject called alert, and I'm sending it to a demo email address that I uh, created. So it would be the device01 operator at gmail.com. Once we've done that, again, you can see we have uh, our uh, mail function in a certain cell. And you can see on the green light that um, these functions will be executed if that condition is true. So that's what we call the, the if column. And we're using the if column also for the third uh, one, the MongoDB. Um, in this case, we need some data that would be a JSON uh, document. So we can create a JSON document here in our stream sheet. And we use then this um, JSON document along with the information to, to what collection the uh, data is to be sent to on a predefined MongoDB connector. And you can see it here, um, that's very simple again. So let's run it and you can see uh, the value is exceeding the maximum energy. Then we have an MQTT command switching off the light. We also have it down here uh, with the MongoDB and the mail um, program that receives the notification. Same thing for temperature. So you can see that we are looking at the temperature now. And if temperature is higher than the maximum value, again, it will switch off the light and it will um, send then uh, also information to the MongoDB database and of course uh, to the uh, mail program here. So that's basically it. Thanks a lot for watching. The stream sheets are open source, so you can use it right away. I would, of course, be happy if you contact us, if you have a request for maybe a premium version or for consulting work. So we're happy to help you and to assist you with this. And well, that's it for now. Thank you very much.